space weather. Looking at the sun in 193 angstroms. See a rather large coronal hole rotating in. A thinner coronal hole rotating, rotating out and an active region rotating out. Here are the magnetic field lines, the 304 angstroms. And here we've got the animated view at 304 angstroms. Filamentary activity calming down a little bit. The plasma filament we saw erupt yesterday crashed back onto the corona. I guess I should say the chromosphere. Let's look at the real-time solar wind here, as we saw in intensification yesterday in solar wind speed. And we've got some perturbations coming in now. Also, we see some phi angle here, riding near the 180 degree mark. Could be like a fleeting coronal hull connection. However, we do see that that has stopped just in the last hour or two. So anyway, the solar wind density remains a little bit elevated at 10.65 protons per cubic centimeter and the solar wind speed, 421 kilometers per second. Look at spaceweathernews.com for a little more data. No significant X-ray flare since that B-class flare we saw yesterday. See some serious magnetometer perturbations here. And that is associated with the heliospheric current sheet once again, obviously. We'll show you the gong too momentarily. And the KP has gone from 3 back down to 1. There's your electron flux. We see the electron drought looks like it may have ended there. However, as long as the coronal hole wind stream continues, it'll probably stay down before it's able to rise back up again. We don't see any charging hazards. And the F2 layer is looking pretty normal. Corona, uh, auroral and australis forecasts are pretty weak. Pretty normal, I guess. And head to spaceweather.com. Solar flux, 10.7 centimeter radio flux, remains at 70. And here's the Gong 2. Top view ecliptic plane field plot. And we see those GOES magnetometer perturbations are being caused by fluctuations in the North Pole versus South Pole tug of war that's going on near that active region and from the looks of the magnetometer we've already crossed into the south pole dominant portion here now this is showing on the last frame it's showing no connection at all so the hours the data is one hour and 34 minutes old so chances are this line is already like this so we're gonna see uh, not as big of a high today as we did yesterday in the magnetometer. Yesterday we did get a, a little bit above 150 nanotesla. Moving on to the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. Look at the Enlil prediction. We are expecting the solar wind to ramp down throughout the day today. First in density and then in velocity. And actually velocity is increasing as we speak it appears the top pane is the density and the bottom pane is the velocity we'll take a look at the total electron content forecast not a big downtick there we do see a small anomaly northeast of Australia And moving on, and we'll look at the geospace magnetosphere movies. First of all, the velocity. We see that varying solar wind speed coming in. Slightly higher velocity bands, represented by those lighter orange colors. 
And we do see some low velocity zones adjacent to the magnetotail. Here's the density. So the density is actually pretty high right now. Some anomalies on the equatorial plane view. And here's the pressure. We got a bit of a double bow shock going on out there. So the Van Allen belts are looking pretty charged right now, folks. Magnetosphere looking fairly normal. Next, we'll look a little closer to home at the geomagnetic perturbations over the poles. See some, some perturbations there, actually. Especially toward the beginning of the movie. See how it translates to the global view. Significant perturbations over Alaska, Canada, Going into the Indian Ocean again from the South Pole, we see that every day. Moving on to quakes.globalincidentmap.com. And go back to, really we're having a drought here. Uh, we see a deep quake there at nearly 200 kilometers deep in Argentina. So there's the area we've been on putting on Earthquake Watch. As we still are experiencing a massive drought of 6 and 7 magnitude earthquakes. What else do we have? We got a 4.9 in Japan, a 4.4 in Russia. Largest quake of the past 24 hours appears to be this 5.6 at Fiji, over 600 kilometers depth, people. Now, let's draw the warning area, the earthquake watch area, as we do every day. There is a coronal hole incoming right now from the sun. If we see a long-standing 180-degree triangle connection, these areas are even more at risk for a 6 or 7 magnitude earthquake. So if you're in any of these areas, please have an earthquake plan. Earthquake droughts often end spectacularly in an unfortunate manner. Let's look at volcanoes, volcanodiscovery.com, see what's on the list today. We've got Etna still erupting. Shivaluch producing a 15,000 foot ash plume there. And a 20,000 foot ash plume. Sakurajima. 7,000 foot ash plume there. Kadavar. 6,000 foot ash plume there. Dekono, 7,000 foot ash plume. Revenador, possible emissions. Saab and Kaya. Not sure if that one's going off yet. Planch on Petaroa. 15,000 foot ash plume there. Volcanoes essentially holding steady. Next, let's go to Zooniverse.org to the Galaxy Zoo Project, where you can classify galaxies and do real astronomy work. Let's show you an example. Oh, there's a galaxy. What's going on with that? I think I see features. Is it an edge-on disk? It's not exactly an edge-on disk. Does it have a bar? Now that's a good question. Pretty faint galaxy. I see no bar. Is there a spiral arm pattern? Well, absolutely not. Is there a bulge? We're going to say a small bulge. Is it merging or disturbed? Nope.
Any rare features? Not that I can see. Not too exciting, but hey, we got it classified. Why do we have to do this? Because computers can't classify this stuff. We need visual analysis by humans. There's only about 7 million galaxies left, so head over to zooniverse.org to the Galaxy Zoo. Get yourself a login. Do some real astronomy work. No degree required. Here's a phys.org article showing us a photograph of the Earth from the moon in 1972. See that halo around it there? That's hydrogen. What does it all mean? Earth's atmosphere stretches out to the moon and beyond. Somebody dug up some old data, and they analyzed it, and they realized the existence of the geocorona, a diffuse shell of hydrogen gas extending about 50 Earth diameters out into space. Quote, space, end quote. So, pretty interesting. Apparently, the atmosphere is actually 630,000 kilometers away. We'll leave links to the article. Next, we've got another article from phys.org. We're looking at the pinwheel galaxy here which is otherwise known as M51. That is the entire group. We're looking at this in X-ray. And the surprising discovery associated with this article are these very powerful X-ray sources not associated with the galactic nuclei. Essentially satellite galaxies or... I mean, there's a lot of talk about things like neutron stars and everything else you could possibly imagine that's made up in space. But... In this situation, um, yeah, galactic mergers are supposed to generate black hole growth and evidence would be strong emission of x-rays, but we're not seeing it here. Another quote, Brightman said, some scientists have proposed that strong magnetic fields generated by the neutron star could be responsible for the luminous emission. So maybe they're taking a step in the right direction with that condensed matter that you're looking at there. In any case, we'll leave links to that also. Here's an article on Science Alert. We can blame YouTubes and ourselves for the rise in flat earthers, says study. A lot of self-deprecation going on here. So anyway, we'll leave links to the article. Not a whole lot to comment on there. A step in the right direction when it comes to astronomy. Check it out. I could tell as soon as I saw the photograph that there was something right going on here. This is the Sophia project. And when I saw that photo, I could tell right away that I was looking at magnetic field force lines. Magnetic lines in the Orion Nebula shown as streamlines over an infrared image taken by the Very Large Telescope in Chile are regulating the formation of new stars. So, yeah, I guess uh, we are starting to uh, get this stuff written correctly here. So the article's talking about how we can't see infrared light emitted from astronomical objects because the, uh, the Earth's atmosphere blocks that out. Most definitely a step in the right direction here. How magnetic fields affect the process of star formation has not been well understood. Indeed, that's true. Though it has been long suspected that they play an important role. At least somebody's not believing gravity runs the universe. So there's a lot of different references here to the way magnetic fields are involved with the, mo the movement of galactic scale and, you know, subgalactic scale motions. Great article. Have a read. Some astronomers are doing the right thing. Thank goodness. Last but not least, how about random-eyes.com? I'm going to pick a random website, people. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I think they should have made this thing red. 
You really, you do, do you want to be blue pilled? I'm pressing the button. Fasten your safety belts. Goadcookery.com. Mythical plants of the Middle Ages. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. The barnacle tree. The tree of poisons. The tree of knowledge. Visit their companion site, Fantastic Fish of the Middle Ages. We got medieval recipes. All right. So there you have it. We'll leave links. Godecookery.com. Yeah. Mythical Plants of the Middle Ages by James Matterer. And here we are back at the sun in 171 angstroms. See that active region in the earth facing area. We do see a magnetic field collapse up here and some ejecta associated with it. If you want to check that out, go to solarham.net. They got links right to the Lasco C2 and C3. And this region right here is what we're talking about. There's, out, there's also a similar one over here. I'm not sure if that one collapses too or not. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, subscribers, donors. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and press that, press that notification button as we're now putting up more multimedia than just the videos. And remember... When you're shoveling the driveway while your video edits in code, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive on the driveway before it's shoveled as your video encodes.